So, so Satish, you will be starting, right? No, first we'll start with design and then we'll go for development. Yeah. You, you want me to uh, present the deck? I can present it, but we'll start with the design, Ganjam. Okay. 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 So Ganshan, what I'll do is I'll just present first two slides and then after that you can present it. That's fine, right? Yeah, that is also. Yeah. So you can see my screen, right? Both of you. Yes, we can see it. Okay. I think folks will keep on joining in and I should start off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, now we are starting the next session of the day. Uh, earlier this morning, you uh, saw the configuration and customization uh, are very easily done on digit and uh, we can uh, we can now we are now moving into the next part wherein we look at uh, designing new modules and then later in the day uh, uh, at three we'll start off with the new domain uh, design and development on the on the uh, digit platform uh, with that uh, as you all know you have been attending this session for last two days uh, you can utilize chat to interact with your uh, fellow participants uh, you can put up your questions queries in the q a box uh, we will, uh, you know, keep the session strictly for one hour. We'll close it at three, and then we'll log into the next one uh, for uh, by Subhashin. So here today we have Gansham and uh, Satish who will walk us through uh, the designing of new modules on top of Digit. Over to you, Gansham and Satish. Yeah, Satish, you want to start, please. Two slides. Yes, Kanchan. So uh, yeah. basically, I think as already we were given an introduction. So we are starting a session on digit extension case studies, so building new modules and domains. There are two parts to it here. One is that for the last few minutes is on how we can design and architect uh, the new modular services on top of the digit uh, the platform. And the second part is how uh, we can run the development uh, engineering cycle uh, for this module from any of our uh, co-creator or uh, partners. Okay, so uh, this is a session. Basically, we uh, we're going to start. So uh, I'm just handing over to Gansham to start uh, giving over you on the design, and then I'll take over on the engineering process. So over to you, Gansham. Thank you, Satish. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Ghansham Rawat, Principal Architect in Ego. Uh, so before I jump onto the solution part of it and how we design, uh, you know, uh, any new module uh, with the digit principle and what is the process we follow, uh, uh, I would like to talk about first the requirement itself a little bit. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, there was a requirement from the ground that although we are building different different modules like uh, PT um, property tax collection, water and sewerage uh, connection, and then the bill payment of water and sewerage, uh, uh, fire and OC, right? All of that we are building, but there are certain requirement where they want to collect the payment. Okay, but those are not really they don't want to build it as a as a uh, full fledged module they don't want to give those workflows and all all of that requirement okay. so that kind of just uh, one paragraph requirement we had okay so what we did is we rather than starting building the solution for it uh, we thought of building a e chalan system for that and uh, the reason was uh, it is like uh, ad hoc 
payment. Uh, so how does ad hoc payment works? Like uh, you generate the chala, okay? Uh, so uh, and uh, for that chala, you make the payment. Okay? And when we we are saying ke, okay, we will generate the chala. Uh, why we we want to introduce one more uh, thing in between ad hoc payment? Why can't we just say ke, okay, you want you pay hundred rupees or thousand rupees? And the reason is this: uh, from the accounting perspective, uh, you always want to capture the uh, granular level details into the system. Uh, so let's say I am paying the property tax. Then what I want is that what is my uh, property tax, if you look at the breakup of the property tax, you will see there is a you know, tax head breakup we will have, which is uh, like property tax itself. And then there is a CGST, SGST, GST, okay, and then fire says, cancer says, all of that is there, right? And those accounts that actually belong to the different department, right? So basically, what uh, we want is okay. There can be a different kind of requirement everywhere. Okay, okay, when you are collecting the ad hoc payment uh, for let's say parking, then you might be collecting some other charges along with it, right? And we want to account that requirement as well. Similarly, you want to send the notification. Okay, you want to uh, capture the unique identification. Let's say either parking that property unique uh, uh, identifier of the property or GSTN number or uh, a simplest example which everyone can correlate is the let's say vehicle number okay when we get the chalan the chalan happen either on the vehicle or your license number right and why we want to do that again uh, we uh, it, it will give you the capability of identifying for what the payment has been made and tomorrow if they, you want to enable the parcel payment or advance payment hello yes go ahead uh, i can see some message the voice is not coming no i think perfectly fine i think maybe some issue from there and yeah okay oh so that you can you can check your Internet no, connection, you can rejoin. So basically, the requirement may you will you want to identify for what you have made the payment, right? So it is start any any system designing start from the understanding the problem statement. You may not get the same problem statement, but you will need to evaluate it, break it up. Okay, what all problem? Uh, what is the problem statement actually? and break down the problem statement. So how we have broken it up, the requirement was very, very simple and straightforward that we want to collect the payment for uh, other services, what we are providing. So we broken up this requirement into few phases. One is we said, okay, uh, uh, we, we will have one category which will identify for which category you are making the payment. For that category, we will have the tax set configuration also, right? And then some other information also we can capture. The unique identification, right? The, the person who is paying the uh, amount. Now let me share my screen. You All of you can see my screen? Yes, can show. Yeah, yeah. Can. Okay. So... <laughs> If you see the the their the capabilities what we are providing, as I summarize already, what is each run, why we built it. Uh, now capabilities. Uh, we, tomorrow, let's say we will have the requirement. We are introducing. There is a billing service. There is a collection service. Billing service job is to generate the bill, right? And collection service job is to. Uh, make the payment, you can either online or offline, whatever it is, right? So that's the payment part of it and billing part of it. In between, we are introducing each other because there can be service specific validations you may need. Uh, so it is like this. 
So let's say we are saying property tax and water sewage is not a full-fledged module in any particular state. Now we need to capture those, those property tax and you know water bills through each Allen system. So you will have certain validation uh, while you are capturing those details. This can be captured at the each Allen service level rather without impacting the other services, core services, and whatever services are already built. You can you can have your things here. Then provide the capability of capturing the unique identifier, as I said, for which entity you are making the payment. Okay. In future, if we want to uh, expose application to the citizen, then it can be done. So, for example, let's say we say, okay, currently uh, 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 we we give the offline challan. Okay, the citizen can go search the challan, make the payment online, or if it is like self assessment, also we do for income tax. We go onto the income tax website and without uh, uh, even uh, uh, any information if you if you are a loyal citizen of of uh, um, the country then what you will do you will show your income okay this this is what the other income we have if it, you are not salaried employee you are not doing the transaction online then you can fill your form and submit it so this is the future requirement we thought of and just employ and then workflow service specification so uh, one more thing we had, there can be chala, which may need the approval also before you collect the payment from the citizen or any entity. Okay, they may require some, some workflow to be integrated. Now, this can be easily done if we introduce each chala in between the billing and payment of ad hoc entities. Right, so if you look at the design, it's a very a simple example okay this is we 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 have something designed it and we have given the thought process and third party uh vendor has implemented it our partner has implemented the service so the information what we are capturing the it will identify ke, okay what all interaction we will need in the whole flow so there is a you can see my screen or I should zoom a little bit. I'll zoom a little bit uh, on 50% or something. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see. Yes. Yes. It's better. Now. Okay. So there is a client. Client can be anything. Let's talk about the uh, backend services. So we have the each challenge service, right? Then we introduce one each challenge calculator also. Okay. Although there is a there is an ad hoc payment. So while you are generating the challenge, you can say, okay, okay, I am generating the challenge for 500. That is one requirement. But by introducing the calculator service, you can also say when you select the category as X and subcategory as Y, the, the, then you don't need to enter the challenge uh, uh, amount, basically. It will, it can fetch from the backend. And it is important from the uh, accountability perspective and transparency perspective. Uh, it cannot happen like if you are not wearing the helmet and it, for you, the person who is, uh, you know, um, penalizing you, he can ask 500 rupees to you and other person 1000 rupees, right? It is, it is like he need to select, okay, what all violation you have done. It should identify what, uh, should be my chalan amount right so that can be done in the e chalan calculator although if you configured for some business service okay, okay for this particular business service i don't i will not have uh, anything in the back end uh, as a as a billing slab or the calculation uh, formula in that case you can enter the amount it will consider that amount then right then it is interacting with the billing service and the notification service this is the e challenge interaction okay so first thing is uh, 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 submit the challenge uh, details using the create api there is a so we have this api contract i'll i'll show you that also okay uh, 
So there is a create API, update API, and search API. Uh, and this is the standard way we have con have mostly all the services will have these three API. Okay. So submit uh, challenge detail to create the challenge into the system. Once the challenge is created, it will validate the request. Okay. And it will validate the business surveys or uh, uh, enrich the data if it need to be like challenge number it need to generate right all of that and then uh, it will check whether this uh, whatever uh, information we have collected in that information we also have the uh, uh, person detail who will who will own whose name you are generating the challenge uh, so that person detail it will check into the system whether already available or not if it is already available then fine if not available it will create the user into the system first. So basically all the citizen information we are keeping into the user. <coughs> we cannot keep it here because this is the PII data, which is personal identification data. Uh, this required a different treatment into the system. Like we need to encrypt that data, mask that data, right? Uh, and then nobody can access it until there is uh, they don't have the permissions. Okay, so uh, create uh create uh, uh user will happen then it will put it on to the kafka for the persistence once it is on kafka then there are there is a e-challan service a calculator service this will calculate the uh, uh amount and then create the bill into the system uh demand basically create the demand into the system and generate the bill for that demand and then it will uh, send it to the uh, notification service for sending the notification. There are certain other component also will be there. Like once you put it onto the Kafka, then there will be persister, indexer. Those will persist the data into DB and indexer will index the data into DB. But we don't want to go there because anyways, you will see that persister indexer everywhere on whatever session you will go through that uh, we have the similar flow everywhere but here the main idea is we want to talk about how we are uh, capturing that uh, payment information in the uh, systematic manner okay so we have this uh, echalan api uh, specification let me open this into the swagger Okay, so there is a create API, update API, and search API. You can see, right? Let me just, yeah. So, uh, if you'll see, all all our uh, APIs are like that. We have the request info, and then we have the challenge object here. And the, with the challenge object, what all information we are collecting? The tenant ID, business service. I mean, category for which category you are uh, generating the chalan. Uh, let's say it can be vehicle chalan or it can be advertisement holding chalan. Right? Then reference ID, if any uh, unique ID we want to capture here, it is optional because always th this we cannot have it mandatory because there will be cases when the reference ID will be null, right? Then we have some description if they want to put. Then the account ID, that is basically to identify the <clears throat> this challenge belongs to which person. Uh, and then we have the additional detail. Additional detail are basically to capture some additional information in case any other state want to capture uh, some more information along with it. Then the source and then array of amount. So array of amount is basically uh, first, we we will have the business service. Business service will have that exact code mapping. So as I started with my um, my conversation with the exact uh, breakup, I took the example of uh, PT, right? So uh, this is what it is. Uh, it can capture like PT underscore tax is thousand rupees, and then total. 
PT tax what a citizen is paying, let's say 2000, then 1000 rupees PT tax, then let's say 500 is uh, uh, GST, 200 CGST, then there is 200 uh, fire cells, 300 cancer cells, like, like that we can have array of amounts, right? Then we have the address, uh, uh, if it is applicable, then we will capture the address also. Uh, in the address also, we have the geolocation if they want to tag to any uh, latitude and longitude, right? So far, so good. Okay. So this is the uh, schema we have. Uh, similarly, the search also will have certain parameter to uh, search uh, based on uh, chalan number, search based on uh, service code, okay, IDs, IDs are nothing, internal IDs, mobile number based search. So all of that search criteria is available here. In the response, you can see you will get uh, uh, the same response with uh, some enriched data. Enriched data, maybe we will have the chalan number and the IDs, basically internal IDs, okay. Okay, so there are some um, technical points we have captured, uh, uh, which we have already discussed the uh, eChallan service, what it is doing, how it is doing, and then calculation service. Uh, uh, we have something called common pay, the, the payment part basically nobody needs to develop. Common pay uh, the component will take care of the payment capturing. So you don't need to develop it separately. Then we have the notification service also available. That also doesn't need to get developed. It just need to get configured. Uh, then we have the citizen information, uh, which we are uh, storing in the user service uh, because there can be mobile number, name, address, which is a PIA data. Uh, okay. Uh, then we have the account ID and reference uh, uh, you, you uh, account ID is basically for uh, linking the challenge to the uh, particular person. Okay, so yeah, this is what uh, is uh, e challenge system, which we have developed with the two line of requirement. So the important point is not uh, the technical specification. The important part is this interaction and how we can break the requirement and get the most out of it. How we can uh, make some generic component within a specific requirement. Yeah, I think I'm done. Uh, if there are any questions, we can take. Before we should take the question now or once that is finished. I think let's uh, take the session at the end. So let's okay. start with Satish uh, because we also have a time crunch. Uh, we have to finish by three to start the next session. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Gansham, for the nice introduction of uh, the complete design, how we arrived uh, uh, the two lines of requirement into detailed uh, PRD and then the technical specs where we designed the echelon service and then we handed over this echelon service for uh, the our one of our partners bell to start developing it okay so this is basically we had uh, uh, m collect where we extended this to echelon use case and this was not built by ego this is one of our partners who was built okay the build means developed it okay the design was owned by us the requirement was Elaborated requirements was owned by us and uh, tracking the development process was owned by us, but actual development activities were done by one of our partners. We have enabled them on digit so that they, they were able to successfully build, deliver it, and also they were able to contribute it back to our digit platform. Okay. Now I'll start with what is the engineering process we followed? So whatever we are following engineering process within EGO to build any uh, modules or products or uh, services within the ego in the digit platform. 
the same uh, the standard process has been followed by our partner as well and we educated them to follow this process to make sure that we follow all the digit standards and also not not just about the following the digit standards and the principles uh, to make sure that we follow the the development process engineering process as well okay so uh, so as we already like uh, uh, the Gansham has explained. So each alone was built uh, by uh, the Bell, one of our partner Bell, and then they contributed. That's the case. I am uh, taking it up. And this is the first uh, service of the module, which is one of our uh, partners. They built as a co-creation module model, and then they have contributed back. Okay, and this is done by Bell, and it is live in uh, all the cantonment boards uh, across 56 uh, cantonment boards across the nation. Okay, and although same has been deployed in our uh, one of our state, Punjab state as well, and uh, the same uh, the Ichalan module is also planned to deploy it in Uttarakhand and other uh, states as well. Okay, so I'll just start with uh, what is the development process we followed. Okay, so um, as Gansha mentioned uh, eye level requirements and use cases shared by Bell to ego product owners. Basically, they are given only two or three lines. So, you know, right? Most of the client, government clients, they'll give us requirement in one or two lines. Okay. Now, what uh, our the ego product owners have done is they created a detailed uh, PRD and user stories, and then uh, they have elaborated and then discussed internally, and then this has been handed over to the Build team, so the who is the uh, SI for building the uh, implementation of the uh, the the containment uh, boards across the nation, right? So when the walkthrough of the PRD and user stories are given to uh, the build team, the our partner team, uh, there were back and forth uh, some interaction and uh, for any feedback, and then finally it is the requirement are freezed before starting the development or design. So, so before starting the development, the design, the technical specs part, we have to make sure that requirements are freezed so that there are no changes uh, will happen on the, the design once uh, the requirements are finalized. Okay. Now the, the, the previous process, I think already Ganchan has explained how the technical design is implemented. So this was completely warmed up by Ganchan and he is the one who has designed the the entire uh, the the HLN, uh, service and is already explained how the API contract has been designed and how the sequence diagram you're showing how the interactions have been designed right that is the uh, uh, from last 20 minutes you are uh, seeing that part now once this design and the requirements are done the next process is planning and starting the development okay this is where my role uh, started where we have since we have been already developing and uh, uh, delivering many modules and the services within ego as part of the digit uh, platform we have uh, enabled the bell team also and the same process uh, to make sure that we deliver the quality uh, product uh, as part of the digit platform okay so we have uh, hand uh, the bell in terms of process adherence as well as development of each alarm in this entire cycle of development okay so based on the the requirements and the design the first estimation and timeline my timelines are uh, given by bell and the templates were shared by ego where we had standard templates to arrive the effort estimation and publish the timelines for the delivery of the each alarm module okay and then the breakdown of task estimation and the plan, everything is done by Bell. And then we reviewed it and then finalized. So before starting the development, the three things here is one is that the requirement, second one is the design, third one is the planning. All this exercise has been done. Okay. Once all these three exercises has been done, then we started with the sprint plan, backlog grooming, where we uh, got uh, all the developers and QA onboarded uh, from the Bell team. And then we started uh, uh, using the Jira uh, board to track all the development activities, including the QA activities. Okay. 
so this was done by the complete management was done by bell team but at the we were constantly used to like uh, giant daily stand ups scrum calls and then sprint plan meeting review meetings to make sure that the the team the partner team is adhering to, to all the process okay and there are no gaps okay so uh, as i mentioned uh, there are daily stand ups for con conductor for 15 minutes where the complete uh, development team from bell and who is managing the project from the bell and the ego representative that is from uh, ego side i was present in this each and every stand up and if required if there are any questions or uh, queries on the design or the requirement uh, on demand uh, the the respective product owner from ego and gancham as an architect he used to join uh, the calls during the daily stand ups okay so next is uh, once we started development uh, we have to make sure that we do a test planning as well right so based on the requirements we had the test cases were written by the qa nominated by bell team okay where it is not just writing the test cases the the test cases review is happened with our ego product owner to make sure that so whatever the test cases coverage is up to the expectation as per the requirements detailed out okay and also uh, they were building the new module first time on top of digit we have conducted various knowledge sharing sessions uh, with the bell team to make sure that how they can build a ui how they can build a new component how they can build an api what standard process they can follow if there are uh, interconnection between like uh, other services how they can integrate it what existing component can be leveraged uh, while building this module for to so for to ensure that they are going to unnecessarily not going to spend any time on uh, writing uh, everything from scratch so they no need to start everything uh, from the scratch right because we already had a reusable components on our digit so we have arranged the, the knowledge sessions for the bell team okay and also we used to have a sprint review on the sprint plan uh, for, for each and every sprint and also as part of the sprint review we used to do a retrospective as well okay and also uh, we used to have a sprint incremental sprint demos with our product owners to make sure that they are understanding the requirement and then that they're translating those requirements to a, the the product uh, which they are building in the right manner so uh, to get an early uh, feedback we used to have a incremental demos with product owners and product owner used to give a continuous feedback on the developed product okay and not only on the product uh, since we said uh, as initially i said uh, we were started this engineering process to make sure that we have the, the our partner also follows the standard process plus also they have to make sure that our the code which they are developing it is also up to the standards of digit okay so we used to do a constant code review from our internal developers from ego side and they used to review the code and then used to give a continuous feedback on that and those any feedbacks used to be agreed upon between the bell and uh, uh, ego team and they used to make those changes and then again the follow up used to be done with the bell team okay the and then the complete development and qa for this entire is each challenge uh, module is completed within two to three sprints and the, there were for each and every sprint we used to have a demo as well okay and the also there was qa once they written the test cases and finalized they used to do a continuous uh, testing and qa sign off uh, happened and once the qa sign off is done we are deployed on the client uat to get the feedback from the clients as well okay and also incremental demo inputs from ego product owners as well as the client uat have been incorporated by the bell development team so once all these things are done once the sign off is done so they have deployed the same product each lm product and the production the containment board and the client started using it once this is done then since this is built as a co creation model you wanted to get that whatever the each lm module is built back to the, the because we are the open source right so we have, they have contributed back to the digit platform so that even other states and other implementation can leverage those whatever uh, bell has built each lm with the help of 
eager. Okay, so we have discussed on this part, and then we started with um, the, uh, the contribution process. That is what I am going to explain in the next slide. So before that, we have one, we have whatever we built, we have uh, added demo with uh, ego management, and it was well appreciated as well. Okay, so this is uh, the slide which uh, shows. Uh, how the contribution, uh, the process worked, uh, that the co-creation development is over was, okay? So then we have discussed uh, and finalized on the contribution process, what during this contribution process, what activities will be owned by EGA and what activities will be owned by the, the Bell team, okay? So we have, each and every contribution is from any partners will be, has to be created with a Git uh, account uh, created in the the partner's name so that uh, in the since we are in the open source in the git forever it shows that this feature or this the module or this service is contributed by so and so person so that's the reason we have asked them to create a git account specifically in the bell name and they have raised the pr okay once the pr was raised we have done again the pr review and the code review uh, uh, for the final uh, review and if there are any review comments, we have suggested them and then Bell team has fixed it. After that, we have merged that along with any configurations and master data they have used for uh, configuring the each LN in the uh, containment board. But the same configuration master data, we can't uh, take it uh, to the digit product. So we just refer those configuration and master data which they have created. And then we added our own master data and uh, sample configuration data in the digit product, okay? Once these things are done, uh, you know, internally also, we did one more round of dev deployment, the dev testing as well as QA testing, and then we signed off internally as well. Even though there, it was the product was signed off by Bell and then it was deployed in production. So we followed the same one more time to make sure that during contribution or the code review fixes or the configuring, there are no mistakes to ensure that we did the entire QA cycle again internally. And then the QA and product sign up has been done. And there are a few improvements also done on top of that. And we have released this as part of the Digit uh, 2.4 uh, platform release uh, during, uh, I think, uh, almost one, one and a half year back. Okay, right now we are running uh, on 2.7 release, but this was done as part of Digit 2.4 release. So this is every quarter we have a one release. So once this was released as part of Digit 2.4 release, so the, the immediately the Punjab is taken and then deployed in the Punjab production. Even other states also interested to take this each LN from the digit platform to other states as well. And also in the later release in 2.5, uh, we have done the revamp of the UI UX as well on top of the each LN which was contributed by Bell so that now each LN is available in the latest UI UX. So uh, I think uh, just to give a, uh, the, the quick uh, snapshot. So basically we had a M collect and we didn't add a in citizen interface for uh, payment of fee services online. So what we had done is we had each M collect service and then that had only, there was no service request. It was directly like one-time payment of each LN, right? Now we have built an each LN service where they can create a service and they can provide an interface for citizen to make a payment as well. So you can make a payment later also, or you can pay online also. That is what we have achieved during the, as, a, as an extension of uh, MCLN to eChLN also. And the second thing is eChLN was the one as contributed by Bell and to ensure that citizens also can make payment online. It's not that just they have, they have to walk into the counter or field payment. Uh, they don't need to depend on only that. They can even get the SMS, SMS message with a payment link and they can make a payment as well. Or they can log into the citizen portal and they can make a payment, okay? And also this, uh, uh, the, just to add, each Avani is the program which is running in all the containment boards, which is uh, Bell is implemented. They have implemented this each LN also in, uh, along with other modules uh, in the six regional languages as well, okay? I think uh, that's all uh, on the presentation side on the co-creation and the uh, extension of Digit uh, to build a new module or new services. So if there are any questions, uh, we can take up.
Yeah, if there are any questions, uh, uh, we have a few more minutes. We can, uh, the questions can be uh, added in the chat window so that we can start yeah, addressing. Our Q&A, uh, we can add the questions in the Q&A. Weaver, I'm assuming that I'm audible. Okay. Yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. So it looks like we do not have any questions in this session. Even if there are any specific questions, you can share it with Weaver as well. Uh, we'll be happy to answer offline as well. Yeah, yeah. or you can, uh, we have been sharing our uh, community uh, discussion board contact yeah. detail. You yeah. can use that as well for your uh, discussion. Oh, that is also quite active and that's where we can take further questions. Yeah. So we'll wait for another couple of minutes. If there are no questions, so then we we'll... Yeah, then thank you. Uh, I think, uh, Satish, is there anything else that you would like to cover or should we? Yeah, I think this? that's it. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Satish. Thank you, Ghansham, for the session. I hope it was useful for the uh, attendees and participants. Uh, please do leave your feedback and let us know what else you would like to cover in the follow up sessions in the future. Uh, that will help us in, you know, uh, designing the program accordingly. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.